Hi, I'm Megan Balangi. My pronouns are she, her, and I'm the undergraduate instruction and outreach librarian here at Alcock Library. And this is a video for English 1310. Here's what this series of videos is going to cover. Getting started using the library webpage, finding books, ebooks, and other resources using the library catalog, finding resources in the physical library building, finding articles in databases, and that's what you're going to have to do a lot of as you're in all of these various writing courses, um, finding materials and resources that support your research topics. I'll give you some tips for using specific databases that will help you with your project. And last, I'm going to be talking about how to get help. Hi, I'm Trisha Boucher. My pronouns are she, her, and I am the user experience and psychology librarian at Alkek Library. And I'm here to tell you the top five things you need to know about Alkek. One, it's Alkek One. Our new technology-rich first floor is open and ready for business. We have everything from sewing machines to laser cutters, from augmented and virtual reality to geospatial data mapping. We even have audio and video recording suites and production suites. So come in. If you can dream it, you can create it on Alkek One. Two, computers. We have computers on multiple floors of the library and printers as well. Do you need to zoom in for your class or complete a project and print it up? The library has those resources for you. Three, study spaces. We have plenty of study space in the library, but we also have group study rooms that are reservable. These exist on the 5th, 6th, and 7th floor of the library and are places for you to meet. We also have collaboration rooms on the 2nd floor. They're kind of specialized group study rooms. They have large screens where people can plug in their laptops and work together on a project. These are all reservable either on the website using our EMS reservation system, or you can reserve just in time at our kiosks on every floor or at the room tablets themselves. So four, events and workshops. We have a lot of events and workshops happening in the library throughout the year. Keep an eye on what we have going and you can learn all sorts of new things. And you can also probably have a little bit of fun. And number five, we're here to help. When you start to scroll down, you see this Ask a Librarian pops up here. Click on that. Choose the San Marcos campus, and you'll come to the Ask a Librarian page. We really are here to help you. So if you want to chat, email, call us, you can stop in and visit us at the Ask Alcac desk on the main floor of the library. You can even set up a meeting with a librarian to talk about your research project. However you need to do it, feel free to contact us. We're happy to help you. And that's the top five things you need to know about Alkek. All right, let's talk about the library webpage. The library webpage is often the first place you go uh, to get introduced to the library. And really, this site is also the library. Some people feel comfortable using our spaces in the library, uh, meeting with groups, doing your work, but also we have so much information and resources available to you if you feel more comfortable using the library website. We have everything there for you as well. So between ebooks, full text articles, streaming audio and video, there's a ton that you can do right here from the website. We try to put the links um, that you'll need in one of two places, and also I'm going to show you the search. The search in the upper left-hand corner is really helpful to find anything uh, that you need on the library website. You also have the menu. So you can navigate this way, or you can click the search. You'll also notice my dashboard. This is all the quick links in one spot. My dashboard has your library account, anything that you've checked out, ebook accounts that you have. You can 
reserve study rooms, send in print, get research help, uh, address any security concerns, and other services right from this page. On the main web page, you'll see Start Your Research, and that's a great place to get started with your research. And we're going to go over those in some of our other videos um, just a little bit later. You'll notice that we have our location and hours here. And you always want to go to the library website. Googling the, the, S, the Alkic Library hours is not always accurate. So always go to uh, the web page and you can actually look at our out calendar of hours as well, um, in addition to our hours that were open um, the day that you're accessing the website. Uh, you'll see Whitliff Collections here. That is a great place to visit. We have uh, a lot of different collections uh, for the Southwest, photography, writing, music, and it's also a great place just to go and relax and take a look through the galleries. Our news and events, if you scroll a little bit further, we have many events. Some will be virtual this semester, um, and you can view them here as well. And also any activities that we have going on in the library, whether they're through Zoom or uh, on site, will be here as well. Hi again. If you're like me, you've Googled your topic and found a bunch of information. And really, that's a decent way to start learning about all the ways people talk about your topic and the biases that they and Google itself brings to that topic. Because Google's not neutral, the algorithm that does the searches was created and coded by humans. And because of that and the wide range of what's out there on the web, most of what you find on Google is not going to be usable in an academic paper. But since we all look at websites, it's useful to have a way, quick way to evaluate them to see if they're worth taking the time to read. I'm going to go over that quickly. So there's four questions you should ask anytime you're looking at a website for the first time. The first question is, is it current? And there you're just looking for a date about when it was written or most recently updated. The second question is, who is the author and what authority do they have to write on this topic? So think about it this way. If you have a physics professor and she's writing about physics, then she probably has the uh, authority to speak about it. The third question is, what is the purpose of the website or who published it? And really that's just looking for why does this website exist? And the URL has some information that can help you. If the URL has .com or .org in it, that means it's coming from a commercial or organizational website. And anyone can buy these domain names. So you really want to double check the About Us sections in those websites to understand better what their, what their purpose is. .edu comes, of course, from educational institutions. Um, again, you still want to double check where that information is coming from within the institution, and of course, the date and the author. The last one, .gov, is for governmental websites, and these can range from uh, an elected politician's statement to um, National Institute of Health excellent research that's been recently done. Uh, so again, you want, still want to be careful. The last question you want to ask is, is it accurate? Has it been cited? What are the sources of the information on that website? And this is, can be a really helpful one to use in everyone's favorite uh, website, Wikipedia. Did a Black Lives Matter search here, and I go ahead and I look at the Wikipedia site. Now, I can't use Wikipedia in an academic paper. No one can. But Wikipedia, some of their uh, sites are actually cited. Some of their sites are cited. So you can go ahead and take a look at their citations and see if there's information that's usable for your paper or that might port you in a direction of more information that's usable. So if I'm looking at these, I can find for here, uh, this citation has a DOI number, which indicates that it's an academic or scholarly journal article. I can go ahead and take this title, Discipline, Disciplining Black Activism, and put that into the Start Your Research bar on the main library webpage and hopefully come up with a nice, usable, academic or scholarly article. 
So don't forget, ask the four questions and check your sources really well. So at this point, you might have looked at a bunch of websites, found a lot of terminology, but you're really not sure what to use. We have here in the library what we call the Academic Answer to Wikipedia, and it's called Credo Reference, and it's a database of specialized encyclopedias, dictionaries, handbooks, and other reference books full of short informational pieces written by scholars for students. Let me show you how to get to Credo. If you're on your course guide for English 1310, you can go ahead and just click on the second page and click on Credo Reference. It's a link in the top left box. And that will bring you to this page. Click on the title Credo Reference and that will bring you to the, uh, to the database. If, however, you're on the main library website, go ahead and scroll down just a bit and click on the Databases button underneath the Start Your Research bar. This will bring you to the Research Databases page. And you can just type in, in the search bar, Credo, C-R-E-D-O, and you'll come up again to this Credo reference page. Click on the title, and that will bring you to the database. Now, if you're off campus, you're probably going to uh, have to sign in using your NetID and password. Do that, and that will bring you here. So the term, I was searching Black Lives Matter, and one of the terms that kept coming up was uh, white privilege. And I want to know a little bit more about that. So I'm going to go ahead and type that in. White privilege. And here I come up with a results page. And there's several really good bits of information on the results page. First, I'm going to have a mind map over here. And this mind map is going to show all sorts of related topics that I can click on those topics and come up with a results search for that topic. So if I click on anti-racism, I'll get a list of results about anti-racism. I'm going to click back. Now, if they don't have a mind map here, and it's just a list of related searches, those are also clickable links, and you can use those to get to another search. But this is a nice way to see those uh, related terms that might help you in your research later. The other thing that I've got is a list of articles, and this is really helpful good information just on this page. First is the title of the article. Second is going to be where that article is from. Here it's from the Wiley Blackwell Encyclopedia of Race, Ethnicity, and Nationalism. A little bit about the article or a quote from the article. And then how many words it is. And really you want to use uh, articles that are going to be at least 800 to 1,000 words. Less than that, they're really short and they're not going to give you a whole lot of information. And then it's also going to come up with some key concepts in the article, some main ideas. This isn't quite what I'm looking for, so I'm going to scroll down to the next one. Encyclopedia of Diversity and Social Justice. It tells me exactly what the white privilege is at the beginning. I'm interested. 1,547 words and the key concepts look good. I'm going to go ahead and click on this one. And I have an entire article to read. So there's, if I look through this article, I've got over here on the right, related searches, more related articles, and then I can scroll down and read through this article and find lots of information about my topic. And it's gonna be scholarly information that I can use and cite in my paper. Now these references here are where they got their information, and you can go ahead and use those for more research. Up here at the top, there's a couple of things that are really um, helpful tools. The first is the citation tool. If you're using APA formatting, copy and paste it. If you're using MLA formatting, you can copy and paste it. Put it into your reference list in your paper, at the end of your paper. Now, once you've done that, make sure you uh, double check the formatting. The information is going to be correct, but the formatting might be slightly off, and the last thing you want is to not get all your points because of a formatting issue. The other thing you can do is you can print up the article, you can share it by emailing it to yourself, you can choose the uh, how you want to email it, you can choose your formatting if you want full text, and then go ahead and send this to yourself. And that's pretty much it. 
Um, the point of this is that whatever direction you want to take your research in, Credo is going to help you get that academic start on that research. And it's going to make your later research in books and articles a little bit easier by giving you the current terminology that scholars and academics use when writing about the topic. Hey, let's take a look at the library catalog. When I say library catalog, it is a specific place that you can search to find mostly materials that are here physically in the library, as well as ebooks and some streaming materials. You would not use the library catalog to search for articles, so that's the difference. On the home page, you can access the catalog right below Start Your Research. And now I'm going to show you a few different ways that you can search for different types of materials and by searching different categories of materials. So let's start on this page. You can see that you have some choices here. You can leave it as a default search and that will search by keyword and it's going to search our entire collection. I'm going to search racial equality as a uh, keyword. Using that term, I got 882 results. Scrolling down, just taking a look at each of these items, I can see what the book looks like or material. It's going to tell you what it is. So this is a little book symbol. You have the title, the location, the call number, and the status. So you're always going to be looking for available. It will tell you if the book is not available if somebody else has borrowed it. As I'm scrolling down, I can see this is an ebook, so that's going to be something I can read online. And as I'm scrolling, I also see streaming video. If I click on this, uh, I will go and be able to access this streaming. So those are a little bit of the different types of things you're going to see in the library catalog. Now I can do more filtering through uh, these results, I can sort by relevance, which that's the default, but I can also search, uh, excuse me, sort by the date or title as well. So if I wanted the most recent information on racial equality, I can go ahead and sort by that. And then here is a book, Educating for Social Justice in Early Childhood, and that was published in 2020. Okay, so let's search a few different um, things and I'm going to show you the differences and this is these are going to be some tips in finding what you're looking for so I had searched before just keyword and you can also search people's names by keyword keep in mind when you do this if I was going to search Angela Davis I'm probably going to find mostly books because of the relevance about Angela Davis but if I was looking for books that were authored by Angela Davis, I can change this drop down from keyword to author. And you'll see if I search um, with her name, first name, last name, it does not uh, work very well that way. So I want to make sure that I put last name, first name when I'm searching author. And this is going to search the entire collection. And this has all the different authors that have the name of Angela Davis. But because I've searched this before, I know that this is the one that I'm looking for. And I can find all of the materials uh, that either are authored by Angela Davis. You can see there's some interviews as well. Uh, another example is what collection you want to search. I'm going to go back uh, to the default screen and we can choose what collection. So if I wanted to look for uh, juvenile books, so juvenile books are going to be books from kindergarten through 12th grade. It includes young adult books like Harry Potter, Twilight series, um, and let's use this example, The Hate You Give. I already know this is the title of the book I'm looking for, so I want to change this to title 
This is just going to make it easier for me to find this book and click search. All right, so we have The Hate You Give in our collection. You can see we actually have two copies. So one um, is in our collection, in the juvenile collection on the third floor, but someone has it checked out and it's overdue. But we do have another book in our Round Rock library, another copy. And the way that you can get this book is click on request and hold this request slash hold. And you can request that the Round Rock Library sends it here to the Outkick Library and you can pick it up when it's available. All right, so, uh, oh, actually, let me go back to title and I'm going to change this to search entire collection to show you something. We also have The Hate You Give as a DVD. So you can see this motion picture. So uh, we have the book, the first one, and then here's the symbol for the DVD, The Hate You Give. It is right there and it tells you the location and it's available. If you don't have a DVD player, we also have them for checkout at the checkout desk on the third floor. So those are some ways that you can search our collections. Um, you can go into a specific collection or you can just search and see everything that we have on a certain topic. Hi again. So you found a book in the catalog that's in print in the library and it's available. And you wanna take a look at it to see if it's useful for your project. Most of our books are found on floors three, five, and six. The third floor is our specialized collections, so our juvenile fiction, our DVDs, things like that. The rest of our books are in our general collection on the fifth and sixth floors. So the fifth floor and sixth floor books are shelved using the Library of Congress call number system. Just think of this as an address for the book. You most likely have never used Library of Congress, but don't worry. You can always ask for help at the Ask LCAC desk on the second floor. Note that when you come out of the elevators, the Library of Congress call number system starts with A in the back left corner of the fifth floor and ends with Z on the bot front right corner on the sixth floor. Once you've found the book, you can use it in-house or you can check it out at the checkout desk on the third floor. If you read it in the library, please don't put it back on the shelves. Leave it on a table or in one of the carts you'll see around. We'll take care of it. We're taking a look at our use statistics. So if you put it away, we won't know if it was used. If you just want to uh, check out the book and take it with you, go to the checkout desk with an ID, preferably your student ID, but a photo ID will do, and um, check out the book. It'll be that yours for four weeks at a time, and you can check out up to 100 items. So we're really here to help you get what you need. If you want to see what you have checked out, go ahead to My Dashboard and take a look at your library account. Just sign in and you can see what you have checked out and when it's due. Uh, the other thing we have at the checkout desk, besides some specialized collections um, we and laptops, uh, we also have at uh, at that desk are course reserves. For English 1310, we have these items on reserve, and these have a uh, two-hour checkout in library use only. That sounds like it wouldn't be all that helpful, but I do want you to remember we have scanners on the, on the third floor that you can go ahead and use with any books that you find in the library. So, again, Please feel free to use books. If you're having trouble finding a book, ask us for help on the second floor. And when you're ready to check out a book, go to the checkout desk on the third floor. Any questions, you can always go to the Ask a Librarian page for the San Marcos campus and go ahead and quickly chat. One of us will be able to help you with your problem. Now I'm going to show you how you can access an ebook so you can read it online, download the PDF. Uh, how you can access streaming audio and video, and also how you can get to our documentaries and films that are available through our research databases. To begin, we're in the library catalog, and this is how you can search for specifically ebooks. 
Over here on the right, search entire collection, eBooks. And I'm going to change this to title on the left. If I was looking for this book, White Fragility, we do have it in our collection. And this is where you need to pay attention to how many users have access to this material. So sometimes our eBooks may have like this one, single user access. That means only one person can check it out at a time. Uh, but what you do to find out if it's available is just to click view online. So there's a link here. And it will take you to a different page. All of our eBooks come from different software platforms. So these may look a little bit different. You may have to create a free account. Um, so it may prompt you to do that. But at any time, if you need help, you can always find us uh, here in the library on the main floor at the Ask Alkic desk. You can also chat with us. On the left-hand side, you can see that you have some options. You can download parts of the book or you can click and view full text. So here is the book. I can read parts of it. I can download parts. I can save pages, email pages. Uh, and if you're using this for research, there are handy citation format generators as well. Okay, the next thing I want to show you is searching, and let's take a look at a different ebook. I'm going to search social justice. So now I'm searching by keyword, and I am searching ebooks. So there are a lot of search results. I might want to narrow this down, but if I want to. Uh, take a look at this ebook, Handbook on Promoting Social Justice. I can click on that title, and then you'll see that these links look different. This is just the way that we purchase materials or have access to materials. I'm going to go ahead and click one of these. And now this takes me to a different looking platform, but it does have the book, and I can download, I can read a chapter, download a chapter. Uh, and go from there. Okay, the next thing is searching for um, streaming materials. So within the library catalog, we do have streaming media. And if you look here, it's toward the bottom, I can click streaming media, let's search social justice. And now I see that there's streaming video, um, there's probably some audio here as well. So you can go ahead and click on the title and click on the link that's below. So these online materials will um, just go straight to the database. If you're on campus or in the library, it's most likely it'll go straight through to wherever it's located within the library. So this took, since I'm on campus in my office right now, this took me straight to um, this, um, uh, let's see, this video file that I want to watch on social justice. If you are off campus or using your laptop, it may prompt you to log in. It may say electronic resources and log in and you just use your NetID and password. All right, so let's look at some, uh, let's look at two research databases very quickly. So I'm gonna go back to the home page. And this is how you can get to research databases that contain streaming materials. Right next to the catalog on the home page is the databases page. You can explore these by subject. You can also find streaming databases if you go to this link. I already know the name of the database that I want to show you. It's called Canopy, so I can just type it here in this top search box. And it shows me a little bit of information about the database. I'm going to click on Canopy Streaming. This is going to take me to this database that includes uh, films from the Criterion Collection and also lots of documentaries and some popular films as well. 
So you can search for, for videos. You can also browse. Um, if you wanted to browse documentaries on um, ethnicity and identity, LGBTQ stories, uh, health and wellness, you can explore by browsing or just by subject. Uh, I'm going to try the social justice um, keyword. OK, so it, as I'm typing, it's going to suggest some materials. And then it'll also put subjects. Um, so I could click social justice. Um, but this looks interesting. Uh, so this is a documentary that I can watch about uh, Lakota teenager fights for social justice. You go ahead and click and play. All right, want to find articles about your topic? Start Your Research is the place to start. I'm gonna show you how you can search using Start Your Research on the main homepage and then how to filter through those search results and find articles full text. In Start Your Research right here, we can go to the advanced search and start from there. I'm going to search Black Lives Matter. Searching that phrase will bring back a lot of search results. Keep in mind, when you search, start your research, you want to keep track of how you are searching, what words you're using to search for your topic, and also try out different methods of searching. I search Black Lives Matter using just those words. I can also put quotes around the phrase. What that is going to do is tell the Start Your Research database to keep all those words together and bring back search results that have all of, all of those words in them. So right now, I have a, a almost 73,000 results. And I just added quotes, so I'm going to search again. And this is just an example. There's a lot of different topics out there. When you are doing your research, it's going to be individual for each person. So you may or may not have a phrase like this. Uh, if you are searching a person's name, the quotes are also very helpful. All right, so after putting those quotes around Black Lives Matter, I have around 48,000 results. So you can see that the, the results are reduced, but now I'm going to have all materials that are about Black Lives Matter. Let's take a look at some of the search results. I'm scrolling down the screen. In the center, there's all my search results. On the left-hand side, this is where I can filter through my search results. And this works uh, like searching any uh, website. I'm sure you all have searched Amazon for something to purchase. And this works very similar to that. You can select various categories, and it will reflect in the search results. These search results will continue to be reduced, but it's going to reflect the different types of materials that you are selecting on the left. So for example, I want to find full text materials. Clicking that. This is also where I can click peer reviewed if I need peer reviewed materials. I can change the publication date as well. Continuing down, I can choose if I want news, magazines, academic journals. And I'm going to choose academic journals because most often that's what you're going to be looking for, depending on your research assignment. And you can see now my search results are around 4,000. So that's weeded out everything that's maybe a news article or something that was in a po popular magazine. It will also weed out anything else like uh, videos um, or other formats of materials. And you can see that if you scroll more, there are more options for you to choose from. So 
feel free to explore those as well. So that's how you can filter. And now let's take a look at finding full text of articles. I did indicate that I wanted full text. So these all should have full text. And as I'm scrolling, you'll see the title of an article and then the full text right on this screen. And you're going to see some differences. And this just depends on how we are purchasing access to this resource. Articles come from all different types of platforms. Um, it's kind of like buying from different websites. These are just all um, on one website, but we may have access to the material um, via a full text PDF. We might have to look at it in a different format. So that's what these are. And we're going to take a look at those. On the first article, I'm going to click on the title. And now I can look at a little more information about this article. The upper left hand corner, this is also where you can find all the full text. If I click on this, I'm going to find the full text of this article, how it appeared um, when it was first published. And these tools on the right hand side, you can email or save the article from here. You can also on the right hand side of this page, save email the article, just make sure that you are checking to make sure it's getting to whatever destination you're sending it to. And from here, you can also find out the citation information. So if I click the cite button, you'll see a citation format pop up above the title. And this is all the popular types of uh, citation styles. And most likely you'll be using MLA. And here it is. With any citation format generator that you use and you find, you always want to double check this against your citation style guide. Also, I'll note that at the bottom of the li this list, you'll find a permalink. If I click that, right above the title, you'll see this link pop up and you can also click shorten link and it'll turn it into a bit.ly. This is really important if you haven't saved the article and you want to come back to this page, maybe you're in a rush to get to class, save the permalink. Never save the URL that's at the top of your browser because that is not a stable link and it won't always come back to this page. But the permalink will. So that's how you get to it. It's at the bottom of the page. And that's how you get full text articles. Now that you've gotten started searching in Start Your Research for your topics, I'm going to show you how to get a better set of search results that are focused on compare and contrast for your research topic. And also I'm going to show you one other specific database that may be helpful in finding information about your topic. First, let's take a look at the database that will give you a little more information about your topic, and then we'll come back to start your research. On the home page, click Databases. And right here in the search box, you can uh, go ahead and type in um, opposing viewpoints. And you'll see this database pop up. Now, right now, you can search in the search box in the upper left hand corner. You have the advanced search and you can also just browse issues. So I am going to use the to, uh, I'm going to use the topic of comparing and contrasting the Black Lives Matters movement and the civil rights movement because there's a lot of similarities, but there's also differences. So using this database, we can take a look at different viewpoints and we can see them in context of what is happening in our world, um, in the geography, um, the area that it is happening and within the time frame that it's happening. And as I'm scrolling, I can already see that there's activism um, that is featured. And we'll take a look at that. You can also scroll a little bit further and you'll see various topics. And these are all going to be topics that are uh, really popular right now. I'm going to go ahead and I can click on this um, activism topic. 
Because if we're talking about research in Black Lives Matter, this has information about George Floyd. When I click on that, there you can see there's images. I can click read more. And this gets into the topic of activism further. You can see that there's main ideas here, various approaches to activism, political clauses, etc. And you can see that this is um, from an online collection of reference material. I'm going to go back one. And I, I want to point out a few more things that are below that. So I had clicked on activism and you can see we have some more materials. So there are websites, biographies, infographics, um, video statistics, and you can explore all of those by just scrolling down the page. You can also search. So I'm searching Black Lives Matter, and there is more information just on that um, civil rights movement. I'm going to click on Read More. And this page looks similar to the activism page. There are some helpful things here. You can translate this. You can change the font size, and you can also listen to this being read. Now, if this article and this information is helpful to you, you can save this. You can download it in the upper right corner. Uh, you can send this to your email. You can print it. And they also have the citation format right there too. So if I click cite, you're using MLA citation style and the information is right there. You can just copy and paste that. With any citation format generator, you want to double check that against your uh, citation style guide. Now, when you're searching for materials, you may find, especially with the compare contrast paper, you may not find the perfect source that includes, uh, for example, Black Lives Matter and all of the civil rights information in one. You will probably have to search for one of your topics um, separately from the other. And in Galen context, uh, opposing viewpoints, um, that is probably going to be the case. But if we go back to databases, and I'm going to go back one to the main homepage, let me show you how you can search and start your research with both of your topics and see if you can find results uh, that are focused on compare and contrast. I like to go ahead and go to the advanced search that's below the search box. Now, as I type, you'll see in start your research that there's some popular terminology that is coming up and you may want to try out some of these other um, phrases. My suggestion to you is to try to keep track of the different ways that you search within Start Your Research because it can all kind of get clumped together once you've been searching on a topic for a while and you may lose track of how you've searched for the material. Just keep in mind when you're searching Start Your Research, it's all trial and error. You're not going to have the perfect search right away. Uh, you're not going to find the perfect article that encompasses all of your search terms. Um, you may have to search this several times. Basically, put in your terminology and click search. See what you get for your search results. If you're not finding what you're looking for, you can go back, try, a, try different uh, keywords here, um, and you can also ask for help. So you'll see that I typed in Black Lives Matter and Civil Rights Movement. And I'm going to try this without quotation marks around these. Keep in mind, you can try those uh, quotation marks around a phrase to keep those words together. Um, but I'm just going to search this way for right now.
and you can see I have about 3,300 search results. Now, this search should give me articles that talk about both of those topics. Another way to also include um, similar or different opinions, um, compare, contrast, is to add those words to our search. So in this third box, I'm actually going to add similarities. You can choose similarities and differences. You can also, um, if I wanted to, I could put similar or same. Some authors may use the term same or similarities, and this will help the databases understand what I'm looking for and come back with more results. That is what happens when you use the or. So this will find articles that say similar, and they also find words that say same and bring back the search results. Now adding that similar or same, instead of 3,300 results, I have about 360. So you can see it reduced the number of results that I have, but now they're gonna be really focused on finding content that is the same um, between those movements. Now, like I said before, you may not find the perfect article right away. You may have to serve, search Black Lives Matter and Civil Rights Movement and differences to start with. Just keep in mind, sometimes you have to pick apart your research topic in order to find materials that support it. Research is all about new ideas. It's about finding materials that support your argument, but you have to be the one that synthesizes those materials and make that argument. Um, you're looking for materials that will support it. So we can also search differences. Now, other terms that you could try, like I mentioned before, compare and contrast, advantage, disadvantage, Procon, you can make a list of these and you can also take a look at some of the results and you may see terminology there that will help you find uh, those compare contrast sources. Thanks for joining us today as we explained how you can find resources for the English 1310 uh, research assignment. Anytime you need help, you can visit us in person on the main floor of the library, the Ask Alpec desk. You can also get help using the library website. On the main page, if you click this widget, you can start chatting with us, asking any questions you have. You can also visit the Ask a Librarian webpage. From this page, you can also chat with us, email, you can call us, send a text, and you can also set up a meeting with a librarian. We call them research consultations, and that's just a one-on-one -on -one meeting where we can give you some extra in-depth help and make sure that you find all the sources that you need and teach you some tips and tricks for searching the library website so you can use those over and over and over again for a lot of your research assignments. Hope you have a good day.